What we've just done here is beautifully outlined several paradigms, if we will, or modes of thinking. Um, what I'd like to do today is to look at sort of two contrasting ones. One of them is going to be the scientific one uh, in terms of orderly, and in some ways it's goal-oriented. So this is one way of thinking, and this is what I'll call vertical thinking. So it's a kind of building on evidence, doing something. And the other one, I could drag in religion into it, uh, could drag in reactive, could drag in imaginative, and it's going to be a lateral thinking. And it's a kind of thinking which is complementary but also very different from um, the sort of thinking. Uh, we're very much trained in the first kind. This is what we do as scientists. You build on evidence, you use method, you try to produce something. And if you ever apply for a grant, you'll find out very soon that you have to have a very distinct goal because you won't get the grant. So this is the kind of thinking we're trained in doing. But in some ways, to do things newly in an interesting way, you have to break out of that and do things in other ways. So um, we'll have a look at this. And the way I like to go is just give us some basics of vertical thinking before we go to lateral and to see how we can use them um, in, in comparison. So vertical thinking, again, is literally building step by step. And the best example of that, what you're being taught pretty much from the first year, is critical thinking. Um, and this is literally judging an argument based on a balanced evaluation of evidence. So we're thinking through something, we're giving an evaluation, and the word kritikos, sometimes people think that critical means negative. You have to bash your opponent because you're smarter than everybody else. Um, critical actually means discerning um, or balanced. So when you, you can be positive and still critical in your, in your thinking. Um, we're dealing with arguments. And argument on one hand is something that you do when you are not in agreement with someone. But more basically, argument is simply an expression that begins with assumptions, we call them premises, and leads to a conclusion. So you're building on the known, reaching something that is unknown. Uh, this is an argument that's about 2,000 years old, and they used this in education in the past. Premise, all humans are mortal. Every human being is going to die. Premise number two, I am a human being. So if all humans are mortal and I am a human being, it means I too am mortal. Does that make sense? Absolutely basic logic. We, we do this as, as a way of thinking. Now, in terms of building an argument, there's two things to keep in mind. And one of them is that premises can be either true or false. So the stepping stones on which you're building can be either true or false. If one human is immortal, then this thing doesn't work. Or if I am an alien, which I'm not, um, this thing is false as well. And therefore, I cannot build a good conclusion um, based on false premises. When it comes to conclusions, they can be either valid or invalid. And this shows us how we put the premises together. So you can have beautifully excellent premises, you can do brilliant research, but your conclusion can still be wrong because you've put them together in a wrong way. So do we, do we know what's going on here? Premises and conclusions. So let's get a little exercise going. And I'll show you, um, this is a quotation from a book called Darwin on Trial. Um, and this is from a book that challenges in some ways evolutionary theory, or at least questions it. Um, I lived in the US for a long time, and I was actually in Kansas, which is very, very, let's just call it fundamental. It's beautiful people and all, uh, but a very fundamentalist state in terms of approach to things. And evolution was actually struck down from uh, the curriculum on the high school, uh, in high schools because it was merely a theory. And so we had amazing discussions with people. Um, but this is a book in which this person is trying to open up questioning evolution as a paradigm. And what I'd like for us to do is to have a read of this little paragraph here and identify, thinking of it critically, what are the premises that this guy is building on and what is the conclusion here? So if you want to just have a read of it yourself and then for each table have a bit of a discussion and let's think about the premises, the foundations, and the conclusion or conclusions that he's drawing towards. So we have premise, scientists are specialized. Premise, scientists are not very good at broad things, or this is almost the first conclusion leading off of that. Belief has to do with a lot of modes of thinking. 
Uh, in other ways, we could say that it's broad, can we? Yeah. Uh, then we have lawyers are very good at dealing with arguments. And can we also say that arguments, do, do they have to do with any of this stuff at this moment? I think when he's like, um, he says that practicing side is a uh, higher specialized, yeah. therefore outside of his field is like not perfectly that, like that's a lot of their fallacies because like um, it's, he doesn't take into account that science isn't just about knowing a whole bunch of facts, it's about having that overall thinking across your disciplines as well, so like that's one of his so, so one of the one of the things that he's perhaps very much creating is an idea of a scientist that doesn't correspond to reality, and that's I'll, I'll, my next question is how do we respond to something like this? But one way of reading this would be what we've done already. One other way of reading this would be simply literally reading what he gives us and, and thinking about it. So we have premise number one: evolution involves many scientific disciplines as well as philosophy. So this is evolution in all its impact. Fair enough. Uh, what people believe about Darwinism, and he says what people believe about Darwinism depends on logic and assumptions. What we actually have here is belief about something as opposed to the theory itself. So that's the broader th scale of things. Then scientists are highly specialized, we already talked about this, but literally almost incapable of looking of at things outside, which in this is problematic already. The specialty of our author, who is an academic lawyer, is identifying arguments and assumptions. So when we build on this, what is he actually better qualified to discuss than scientists? The, the, la the validity of um, an argument for or against evolution. Yeah, so really validity of arguments. I mean, in some ways, maybe he could give us a better understanding of a broader debate of the beliefs about things. But is he qualified to talk about the theory itself? How the theory is constructed, what the evidence is built up there? Not at least he doesn't tell us that. And this is one of these beautiful ways in which you can construct an argument, give a sense of where it's going, looks, looks very, very strong, but in some ways he completely avoids the whole topic of what is the theory of evolution, what, are, what is the data that, gives, that, that is given, and how do scientists themselves understand this theory. So there's different ways of, of looking at this. When I first showed this to, actually this would be science postdocs at Monash, and they saw that and they got actually really, really angry. And some of the people got angry in a way that didn't quite know what to do with it. And so they started to get, uh, what, there's an argument called ad hominem, uh, which is literally against the person or against the man. And the first response was, who the hell do you think you are? I've been studying this for 10 years. I know about evolution. And it tends to shut down the discussion in some ways because you're challenging the person of, of the author himself or herself rather than dealing with the, with the argument. Another way of looking at it would be to go back to the premises and conclusions relationship and that's the premises can be either true or false and conclusions can be either valid or invalid and in some ways the good way to approach these kinds of debates will be to look at the premises open the discussion see what are you actually founding your conclusions on and rather than starting in some ways on the with the conclusion itself and challenging the person's thinking you can look at well let's 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 discuss the premises and see what we can agree with not agree with and maybe we can actually do things um, another way. And th this is another question altogether. So here we're talking about truth or falsity of the premises, and we can discuss that. Another and sometimes more complex way is getting to the conclusion and looking at is this actually a validly constructed conclusion or are there problems with the logic um, itself? Um, now, what I'd like to look at is these, these are, we're talking about critical thinking, vertical thinking, building step by step by step. Um, and the way we digest things, the way we build on things is very much determined on how we are educated, how we know things, how we, um, built and construct um, the world around us. And an important characteristic or important role in that is played by uh, memory.